Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome again to another episode of Footprints. My name is Mr. Davis. I'm a leadership teacher at Beverly High School. And today joining me for this episode is none other than Mr. Gary Padonis, who is, ladies and gentlemen, a computer science teacher here at Beverly High School. And uh, so we're going to have a conversation today with Mr. Padonis, if if that's okay with him. And I'm sure it is because he's here. I showed up, so it's okay. <laughs> I did indeed. So um, we're going to start off. I, I was looking at uh, a couple of these questions, and I, I, I have one right off the bat. Um, what inspired you to become a teacher first off? That's number one. And then secondly, what specifically really kind of got you involved with computer science and programming and video games and all of that? All right, I'll, I'll give you the condensed version. Um, I come from a teaching family. Okay. My father's a teacher. My uncles are teachers. My brother's married to a teacher. My sister's married to a teacher. All of my cousins are teachers. <laughs> okay. So roughly about 25 minutes after college graduation, my father was driving me home. And he pulled up to Beverly High School and said, you have an interview in about an hour. <laughs> and he dropped me off, and I went into a room, and I interviewed with Mr. Zapantis to become a biology teacher. Wow. Um, and that's literally how it happened. My father said, you cannot live with us without a job. <laughs> um, he had forced me to become a substitute teacher my junior and senior year of college. Mm -hmm. um, and I really enjoyed it. Um, but I didn't really want, I wanted to be a, a lab tech. Right. So when he dropped me off in front of the school, I'm like, okay. And I went in, I interviewed. Um, luckily enough, I got the job. Um, it was a great first couple of years learning. Um, to answer that second part of the question, why do I like teaching, though? Yes. I'm going to go back to um, when I was teaching at my dad's school as a substitute. Um, I was in a, a, a science classroom, and I noticed there was a young girl trying to learn one simple thing from what the teacher had given her. Mm -hmm. um, and I gave her one little trick. I explained to her one subtle way that you could think about these two chemicals combining. And I noticed that moment where she understood it. And you saw her whole face change. And it was, it, there was a little bit of, I'm proud because I know it. Mm. But there was also the, oh my God, I can learn this. All right? And that realization was so evident. And it was such a positive thing to me to witness that happen. Yeah. That was my hook. Well, it's funny you said that because I, I'm a basketball coach, and that's the same thing that I see when kids, like, kind of get it. It's like, ah, oh, they don't really get it. They don't really get it. And then all of a sudden, ding, the light goes on, and they get it. And I'm like, wow, that's awesome. They understand. Mm -hmm. and, they're, and now they're learning, and they're evolving, and they're understanding what it takes to, to get to the next level. So... Doing that, that teacher moment that you had, yeah. I can I can really... Uh, it, it's that confidence. Yeah. You, you know, you must see it. It must be a little more obvious as a coach oh, yeah. when the kid like, does a positive play, makes that perfect pass to their teammate, and they see it, and they see their teammate score. It's a little harder sometimes as a teacher because the payoff isn't as obvious. Right. I mean, sometimes it is for us because we know the connections that they're try we're trying to build in them, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the kids might not see it, but when you... When it becomes obvious and you see a kid's face just light up, yeah, it's amazing. Like right now in my computer science class, these kids are um, just starting to learn how to control the characters on their screen. And I have a couple kids who have figured out how to move their spaceship around, shoot things, and they've hit the enemy. <laughs> and it's the first time they hit the enemy and it worked. And you just, they screamed in my class. They yelled out. Woohoo! I'm like, normally you're like, that's bad. No. Like, no, that's positive. Keep doing that. Keep yeah. showing me how, how you like learning. Yeah. And how it pays off for you, and how the, there's a positive payoff for everything you learn. You're right, and it it's it is such a, 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 a when you say positive, you're right. It's like they get it, and all of a sudden it's like they get it. Oh, they got it. <laughs> it's like, oh wow, that's awesome. I think that was for me. Like the last couple of years during the pandemic were so tough. Mm -hmm. because the first year of the pandemic, you didn't see them. They were off. Mm -hmm. And some kids, you literally did not see their camera was off. Right. But then when they came back that first year, you didn't get to read their faces. And it was so hard for me just 
trying to get that feedback. Mm -hmm. I mean, so much of what we do as a teacher is trying to understand the emotional state of the kids and how they show it through their eyes and their face. Right. Once those masks went on, it was tough. You didn't, there were times where kids were getting it, and I didn't get that they got it because I didn't see the smile on their face. Right, exactly. And there were times where they were struggling that I didn't see it. So I'm just so glad we've had the last couple of years where we get to see our kids again. Yeah, without you know? a doubt, without a doubt. So is that your favorite part of teaching, you think? Or would, this, would there be something else that you is really your favorite part? Oh, my favorite part of teaching is kids. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm more than double their age. They keep me young. <laughs> I mean... I know that deal. I mean, there's... When they got it going on right, they're so much fun to work with. Yes. And, I mean, you kids, you guys got to understand it. All your teachers are here because we like you. Yeah. Um, we really enjoy... Even when we're giving you homework or saying things that might not be positive to you... We're doing it because th there's a love there, and we love to see those positive things happen to you, you know? Um, yeah, I, I just lo love it when kids are trying hard, working hard, and seeing the payoff. Yeah, for sure. And it's funny because I always say to my students in my leadership class, I understand where you're coming from because, like, I traveled in your shoes. I was a high school student, and I had those same type of issues that you might have. But as you're going through it, now you're working through it. You can kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel. You're like, oh, wait a minute. Um, I didn't understand that in the beginning, but now I do mm -hmm. because I have a teacher or an educator to really get me over the rough spots, and that's really what's important. Right? Uh, well, one of the things I really love about teachers, uh, teaching in general, I teach almost all freshmen. But I have one of my classes, upperclassmen. Occasionally I'll get a kid as a freshman who didn't get it, but you see them as a junior and senior and they're fully grown, and they've matured mm -hmm. mentally, not just physically, because all these kids grow up. But sometimes you see a kid who just matures, mm -hmm. and you just see just a polished adult, and it's such a payoff. You know, you see a kid that you thought was going to have such struggles, and they're doing it, and they're doing it well. Yeah. You know, and they didn't think they were going to do it. <laughs> and they come back to you, and they're like, hey, Mr. P, how— how am I doing? I, I got this. Uh, I'm, you know, working at the tech, trying to get a job, you know, working on cars. I, I fixed this type of car. I did this. And you're like, good job. I always knew it was there. You exactly. Hit Give a fist pump, man. And you those are the kids it. who wouldn't talk to you freshman year. They, they look at you like, why are you talking to me? I want to put my face down. That's you know? right. That's right. So I would imagine you measure success in your teaching um, beyond just grades and test scores, basically based on what you've been saying. Um oh. Do you know what? The one thing I wish every kid would understand is, is how hard you're trying is more important than your test score. Ah. If you have drive, drive doesn't always equate to success right. or initially. Right. Hold on. Let me rephrase. Drive doesn't always um, relate to success that you can see initially. No, no. I, I but it that. will get you there if you keep going. And so many of these kids right now, they don't understand that. If you don't get something, keep going. Mm. Okay, keep pushing through. Mm -hmm. all right? um, we used to go on that trip to Bodeborg with all the freshmen, and I, I hope we can get back to doing that because it, it, it really allowed them to fail, you know, fail again, but keep trying yeah. in a safe way. Kind of like, uh, one of the things that, like, as a parent, I watched my my daughter go through playing sports. Right. It was kind of easy to, you know, you kick the ball wrong in soccer, you get back in line, you try it again. Right, right, you right. You keep going, and you you keep going until you see success. Right. S Translating that into education is difficult for some of the kids. It, it is. And it's funny that you, you use the analogy for sports and soccer. Because for me, that's been a big thing. Like, especially with sports. I think it's sports galvanizes not only kids and teens, but coaches too. Mm -hmm. And you build this culture with kids. And usually, it's sometimes for me now that I'm older, it's not about wins and losses. It's more about developing and seeing where that kid's going to fall and what mm -hmm. level they're going to be at. And so as a teacher and an educator, I think we strive for all the same things to make sure they understand and make sure they can use that and push it forward later on in life. Yeah, like I, I wish I could go a whole year without giving grades. Yeah. And it would just be the feedback that I talked to you about. Mm. All right. Like, honestly, sometimes you might meet all of my requirements to get an A. Okay? But for some kids, if you stop right there, that's not what you're going for. Right, right. You know, you got an A here. Right. You produced an A worth of work. But you know what? You can show me more. 
you are capable of more. You have more creativity in you, and you have this opportunity. Mm-hmm. Don't leave an opportunity on the table just because yeah. you think you're done. That's right. You know, well, well, I mean, Michael Jordan was cut, what, freshman year of basketball? Sophomore. He finished- He's yeah. a sophomore. But imagine that. Here we're talking about one of the greatest basketball players to ever pick up a basketball, and he got cut as a sophomore in high school, right? So being humbled and now going, all right, and his parents didn't coddle him. They, they didn't say, well, Mike, I'm going to go talk to the coach and get you on the team. Said, his mother said, work harder. Exactly. <laughs> so sometimes we don't always know what the work harder looks like, right. especially with struggling students. Like the kids in my classroom who don't know how to, like you know, you're in basketball, you know what it looks like to do more drills. Right. Some of these, it's not obvious what a drill looks like if you're writing and reading. Mm. Right? Yeah. And sometimes I, I feel those drills that are difficult that you got to sit there on the court bouncing a ball a million times so your arms are going to fall off. Sometimes mentally you got to go through a little bit of that physical pain a little bit. Yeah. Like kids don't always know what it looks like. All right. You know? All right. So for some of us teachers, we got to translate between kid and learning. So as you're using that vehicle, you're implanting what I call footprints. That's what this mm-hmm. podcast is. You're leaving a footprint on those freshman kids. Mm-hmm. And, and they're going to take that footprint and be like, you know what? I had Mr. Badanas, and he was awesome. And they're going to carry that with them. And that's what this whole thing is about, is being able to pay it forward in a, in mm-hmm. a sense. right? No matter what we do, we want to always be able to impact somebody positively. So I have a question for you. How do you foster a sense of creativity and innovation in your students within the realm of sort of that computer science and video game programming type of deal. One of the reasons why I'm not a biology or chemistry teacher anymore is because I wanted to hit that kind of creative side. Mm. Um, Video game design started from a kid. Um, I had a student, um, Tyler, it's almost 10 years ago now, which is kind of scary. He, (laughs) He was failing all of his classes. Mm-hmm. And Tyler was an incredibly smart young man, but he'd spend his time playing video games. Mm-hmm. But he just happened to be an intern down in the tech center. And that's where I hang out. Right. And one of the things I think as teachers we all have to do is listen to kids. Yeah, for sure. And I'm just sitting there day to day to day listening to this kid talk about um, how hard it is to design video games and um, how he wants to go into it and how he has to learn X, Y, and Z to understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. But then he's also talking about how he's not engaged in any of his classes because he doesn't see a reason to do X, Y, and Z in math class. Right. And I'm sitting there going, you know you just said you needed X, Y, and Z. And, but you're also telling me you don't want to learn it in math class. Right. All right, let's connect the two. And myself, Mrs. Miller, who's the um, director of uh, digital learning for Beverly, and Tyler sat down and said, what would we need to teach you to get good at programming? Right. And we sat down and we wrote a syllabus. Right? Somebody listened to what that kid was interested in and said, yeah. let's make this into something that you could use. Yeah. Right? So listening to the kids, hearing them, finding what they're interested in, and then giving them an outlet to use that. You know, making it authentic to the kids. Oh, man. Now, it's a little easy in video game design because a lot of the kids are interested in video games, but there's still a lot of, like, um, yeah. there are a lot of struggles. For sure. Right? Because I have kids who struggle with writing, and a lot of video game design is write me a story, mm-hmm. right? So it's a lot of, let me ask you a question. If you were in a video game, what would you do? Right. Or what's your motivation? Um, relate it back to things that have happened in their life or what interests them. Oh, right? for sure. Try to get who you are out onto the computer as best as possible. And that's the biggest question, which is why we're doing this podcast, right? Because Footprints is about who you are mm-hmm. and who imprinted a footprint on you to make you the person that you're becoming or striving to be, right? A lot of times it's your parents or could be a, a friend or a neighbor, could be, you know, your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, could be anybody, right? But the whole purpose is to take that footprint, now that it's implanted on you and mm-hmm. imprinted on you, and then you use that to really kind of do some good in the world, mm. right? Drive that a little bit. Make well, that's that su- something. such a good analogy, too. Yeah. Because there's so many people who touch you. Yeah. But not all of them leave that print in you. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's and that's the see that's the challenge right there, Mr. P, is to be able to leave that print, Mm -hmm. right? And then as you leave it, you're hoping that someone will take it and carry it Mm -hmm. and carry it forward and do something good with it, because that's what we're here for. 
we're here to do that to make the world a better place if we can and, and that's what it's about i can tell you, i'm i'm old now <laughs> Me I, too. Ju- I just got my AARP application in the mail oh, yesterday. Oh, no. Um, I, I have can a card. Tell you, I can name the two teachers from when I was in high school who put that imprint on me. Wow. And they're the people who talked to me. Mm-hmm. They learned who I was. I was a, hard, hard to imagine, but I did not talk in high school. Yeah, I, 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 the, I can't see that. I was the quiet kid who would sit <laughs> in the back of the room, and I would listen to everything. I'd do everything the teacher said. Right. But I had a couple of teachers who made it a point to talk to me. Have conversations with me about what interests me. One was my biology teacher, brother Tim Paul. He's the other than my father, who's a teacher. He's the reason I'm a teacher. Right. Like he taught me biology, but he also taught me kind of the patience of a teacher. Teacher, um, the quirky side of a teacher. Yeah. That if you walk into my room, you know I'm a little odd. Right? <laughs> um, brother Tim Paul is my motivation. I love um, it. And then I have another teacher. Um, Miss Zimmerman, who was my chemistry teacher in high school, mm-hmm. and I just remember her as a four-foot, uh, four-foot nun woman from, um, I believe, Brooklyn, who on the first day of class said, if I don't balance my equations properly, she was going to break my thumbs. Oh, ouch. And she was kidding. <laughs> yeah. But she was always that four-foot nun woman from Brooklyn <laughs> who had that approach to her, and it was always someone with, with love who would do that. Yeah, you know? so for sure. I, I always have that side, and both of those people as teachers I got to know again as I was older, and they kind of helped me when I was younger as a teacher mentor me again. You know? Amazing. So think about that for a minute. Here's you've been impacted, and then it's 28 years here at BHS. Yeah, a long time. Right? And so 28 years you've been imprinting footprints on folks, right? And you probably have some teachers that are here amongst our staff that were probably in your class at one Um, point or another. There are more students who have come through my class who have become teachers at Beverly High School than there are teachers who taught with me when I first started teaching. (laughs) So that's interesting. And I I walk around the hallway, so I'm like, yep, you... That's one of the things I love about Beverly, by the way, is, like, there's some weird gravity. Yeah. People don't leave this city, right? People stay here. (laughs) They love it. Their kids go here. Like, I don't live in Beverly. My kid goes to school here. I love seeing the familiness that, like, never leaves Beverly. Yeah, that community is awesome. I mean, It is. Some of the kids I had as my first years teaching, one of them's the vice principal of middle school, a couple of them are teaching here with me. I got kids who just graduated a couple of years ago, they're aides in my classroom now. Wow. And it's just f- so much fun to see their How growth as people. Is that? It's you awesome. Know? Like Miss McCoy, who's an aide in my class right now, she I feel like she was a student in my classroom five minutes ago. It's just so amazing <laughs> seeing her with an adult voice working with kids. How great is that, right? Yeah. You know? So shout out to Miss McCoy, by the way. Indeed. So there was a footprint that was left on her, and look what she's doing with it. Hopefully. She's putting that playing it forward a little bit. We love that. So now as someone with extensive educational experience, what advice would you give to new teachers? Just starting out in the profession. Be flexible. Ah. Okay? Um, kids have good days, bad days. Your best students, your worst students are going to have good days and bad days. Mm-hmm. Be flexible with them. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they have to learn one way. Some days the approach that worked really well today might not work with that same kid. Mm. So have variety in your lesson plan so that if you see something that's not working, you can still approach that kid with the same material, just in a different approach, right? Um, In particular, I try to approach every standard kind of from three different angles. Um, It's good to kind of have, you know, those arrows in your quiver ready to go. Ready to go, yeah, (laughs) Because, I mean, I understand things the way I understand things. Mm -hmm. The kids in your classroom might understand it that way. They might understand it a different way. Different way, yeah. The other thing I would suggest, forget how you learned, right? Learn with the kid. Yeah, that's huge, huge, Mr. P. Yeah, like I see so many people teaching it the way that facilitated their learning, Mm -hmm. which is great for kids who learn like you. Right. Right? And there might, you might be the average learner, but when you have kind of, 20% 20% of your class that are high flyers that are going to need more and 20% of your kids that need more support. Yeah. If you shoot for the middle, it's not going to work. You've right. got to get the 7-10 split. Oh, for sure. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a podcast we show in the class that Judy Miller and myself teach about 
that's the hardest shot in bowling to get. Yeah. But as teachers, that's what you need to go for. You gotta go for it. Because yeah. if you can hit the seven ten split, you can get everybody. Yeah. So as a new teacher, understand your toughest students are your number one audience. Yes, indeed. You know? Yeah. Very well said, sir. Very I, well said. Again, I'm going to reference the, and no, I'll get you the name it. of that podcast that we stole that from, but it's so true. That's okay. No, no, listen, you're right. It is true. So having said all of that, what do you hope your students will take away from your classes beyond just the technical skills and all that stuff? Um, it can be fun, right? Computer programming in particular can be the most boring thing possible, if in you your class, to. absolutely not. When I walked into your class the first time, what did I see? Star Wars stuff, and I love Star Wars. But these kids need to understand that computer science isn't just letters and numbers on right. the page. It's what you want to make of it. Mm -hmm. right? So if you put yourself into it, you're going to get something that is challenging for you to do, mm. but is a payoff for you and people like you. Yeah. Right? Uh, like I can program all sorts of you know, nice apps for my phone. Mm -hmm. I have no clue what you want on your phone. <laughs> right. And you know what? I am not a teenager. <laughs> so if I'm trying to design an app for a teenager, these kids are the perfect audience. So I want my kids to understand that they have knowledge that they could apply that someone else doesn't have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And even though I might have more skills in programming, I need your skills to understand who you are. Yeah. So we can reach you. You know? Mm -hmm. you, you know... It's funny that you said that because when you're talking about reaching students, you're right. Everybody's kind of like on different levels. But if you can level the playing field and have something that they can all kind of latch onto at that mm -hmm. same particular time, it's easy for, for your classes to now kind of understand where you want to go with stuff. Yeah. Right? And, you know, there's one, one skill that I think um, a lot of the kids need to see. You need to get to class on time. Mm -hmm. um, because typically in the first five to ten minutes of my class is the most important time. Yeah. Because I'm doing something specifically to get to an area of your brain that you don't think you have. Right. right? Every kid in my classroom has some background knowledge in computer science. They just might not know it. Or what we're doing has like an actual effect on their life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They just don't know it. They don't know it. So yeah. in the first five minutes of class, I'm trying to get you to see, wait a minute, this is how it might connect to you. And it might be the weirdest connection possible, right? But if you know it's there, when I'm spending 10 minutes explaining to you how computers work and how to do it, you are actually kind of predisposed to listen because you see the use. You come into my class 10 minutes late and you don't understand the use. Right. Now we got a problem. You might know the mechanics <laughs> of it, but you're not going to know why. Exactly. And that's where we get the problems. So what do you want every student to know when they come to your class or when they leave your class even? What do you want them to really know about? Well, I want every kid to understand what foods I like as snacks. Oh, right. Yeah. So I all want, they, they, they need foods. to feed me. Yeah. But I want them to, one, understand that if they're teaching computer, in my computer science class, I want them to know that they can do this, mm. right? Like there's nothing that I've taught you. Even if you weren't successful, you can do this, right? right? You're capable. You know, I gave you tough things to do because I know you can do it, right? And I want you to own that. Own it for right? sure. I want you to understand that it. It, it's not me or you know that's saying you didn't do this. It's you got to own it. Mm -hmm. I can help you do it. Mm -hmm. Right. So I want every kid to know that they're capable. Right. I also want every kid to know that um, the worst thing they can do is stop. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, it, you know, it's funny you said that because sometimes kids don't give themselves a shot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you'll give them an assignment. It's very straightforward. You say, hey, this is what I want you to do. And they just look at it, and they're like, uh, I don't know if I can do it. But you haven't even tried. You haven't taken a shot yet yeah. at it. So give yourself a shot. And That's I want I kids, saying. like, when, when they come up with something and they, they hit a roadblock or a barrier, I want them to be a little self-reflective mm. and be like, okay, why am I having trouble? I'm going to be able to do that eventually. I'm going to get the help I need. Right, right, right. right? But what type of help do I need? So when I, I call over the teacher, is it, I don't understand what I'm being asked? Mm -hmm. It's, I don't understand the steps I need to do, or am I just really confused? Like, I don't have the background knowledge. Right. Right? So if I, would, I, I wish kids would just um, have that ability to self-reflect as they're asking you questions. Right. Um, I, t I tell my kids in class, my favorite thing they ever do to me is they call them, they raise their hand. 
and they'll have their ha hands raised as I'm helping other kids for a good three to five minutes. And then when I get to them, they're like, I'm so sorry I figured it out. <laughs> That's awesome. So my next question is, okay, tell me what you figured out and how you figured it out. Right. And they're like, I figured it out. I'm like, yes, I know you figured it out. That's awesome. Right. Explain it to me. Right. You know, and they, they're, 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 they're upset because they think they wasted my time. Right. And I'm like no. super happy because you yeah. figured it out on your own. You went through that struggle. Right. You know, you worked it. You dunked for the first time. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> You know, I don't think they. I love it. I don't think they understand that teachers, when we grade your papers, kids, when we grade your papers, yeah, we, I'm sitting there, look like living vicariously through you. No, for sure. And I'm like, all for right, sure. you know this. Okay, come on, just say it this way. Come on, I want to give you an A. Come on, <laughs> like you're for almost sure. there. Please. There's a couple times I've walked up to the kids in the hallway, and said, "Look, your answer to this question was blah 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 blah. Is there anything else you want to say?" <laughs> I know it's in there. <laughs> That's in there. And I, I know love you it. deserve it. Come on. I love it. So on top of being a teacher, he's also a father, ladies and gentlemen, in case you didn't know. His daughter's name is Sarah, uh, and she plays soccer. And, you know, soccer is a very competitive sport nowadays, as with anything. Um, but I wanted to ask you, how did she get into soccer? Like, how did she get into that type of uh, sport? What, was the, what <sighs> drew her to that? I think um, what's interesting is I my my daughter for town soccer had the same coach from age five to last year. Wow! Like she was an assistant coach with that team the whole time. And I remember the very first day we dropped her off at practice, and she stood on the coach's leg, attached. <laughs> and I remember sitting That's on the awesome. sideline, going, "We're never going to be able to come back here again. She's going <laughs> to hate this. She she's like going to hate it." And the next day, she's like, let's go. I want to go. Let's go. And the camaraderie of soccer, yeah. the friendships, the, um, the, there's something about the norms yeah. of any good classroom or sport where you know what to expect. Right. Right? Um, she always knew what to expect from soccer, and she always knew kind of wh what her role was. And she, she was... Never going to be the top soccer player in the world, but she knew her role there, yeah. and she knew she was always part of a team, right. and she knew she could always have success and what success looked like, right? Um, which was amazing. As, and, and to watch that growth. Yeah. You know, especially the last couple of years where um, there's a point where any good parent, it stops from being little kids out there kicking a ball, and everybody cheers because they kick the ball, yeah. to, <laughs> oh, my gosh, are they doing it right? Yes. To... Okay, this is just fun to watch. For sure. And as a parent, that's what you're doing. You're like, oh, this is so much fun. My kid is having a good time. They're learning. They're having fun. They're cultivating, like, you know, togetherness. Mm -hmm. They're cultivating, like, discipline, focus. All those things are great in team sports. And uh, as teachers here at Beverly High School, that's what we try to do, cultivate that, that culture of togetherness mm -hmm. and working together and, and being able to support uh, our students and getting them through all those tough times no matter what. Mm. Well, I'll tell you, this has been very enlightening for me. I've had a great time talking to Mr. Gary Padonis, our computer science teacher. And I wish uh, we had you know, another 30 we, minutes. I, I that went quick. Had. Yes, it did. Um, but this has been fun. This has been uh, another episode of uh, Footprints. And uh, join me uh, next week, and you'll love who my guest is next week. won't tell you. But uh, you'll love who it is. And uh, I just love pushing this forward. Don't forget to check out our um, SoundCloud, where this is also posted. And uh, we have Channel 22, where it'll be posted as well. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good night. Enjoy yourself. Thank you, Mr. P. Appreciate it.